All right, I just wanted to share something really quickly that I've been experimenting with, and it's been really working well for me <clears throat> in terms of strengthening my sensitivities and being able to feel more empowered <clears throat> as an empath. So I just thought I would share. So typically, is, as an empath, especially if you're an emotional empath, which is primarily what I speak to, because that's what I am, um, <clears throat> you you draw sort of energy into you or towards you. You're more like a magnet. And other people, a lot of times, radiate energy and push it out. So there's people that, and we both, we all do both, but people who are primary emotional empaths tend to pull energy towards them. And it's part of our gift because we, that's why a lot of people feel comfortable talking to us or feel comfortable with us is because we usually draw people in close and more intimately and feel them and connect with them. And, and you know, we feel, we usually feel feel what they feel, so they feel that they're not alone, and often we feel that we're not alone, so it's a great way to connect with people. But as we all know, if we don't have an understanding of what this kind of energy is and what it does, and if we don't know what's going on in our own internal alchemy, we can often get lost in the energy of others or pull, take on other people's stuff so much that we forget <clears throat> who we are, what we feel, or even can lose touch with ourselves entirely. So... One of the things that I regularly do is make sure I spend time alone every single day, every morning, and getting in touch with where I'm at, what I need, all of those things, all the things I talk about. But in addition to that, one of the things that I've been doing is <clears throat> practicing pushing my energy out of my pores. And actually, Till Swan gave me this idea, and it works really well, and I've kind of modified it for me. But... Um, so practice that you can do is breathing in and out of the pores of your body, like imagining your pores... For example, breathing in vitamin C and breathing out toxicity or something like that, you know, whatever you want. So one of the things that um, you can do is imagine little tiny Merkabas coming out of your pores. And what I do is a visualization where I imagine the tiniest space in my heart. There's a space in our heart where all things are connected and the energy of our whole toroidal field is connected there. So we can literally self-sustain our own energy by connecting to this space in our heart. At least it works for me anyway. Um, so I imagine this space in my heart and I drop down in a, in a meditation, I drop down into this space. So I feel like I'm in a white, sometimes it's a white room, sometimes it's black, it just depends. But, um, or dark, like night. But usually it's just the space in my heart. And then I imagine myself like sit, I, I'm seated in a meditation position and I imagine a Merkaba all around me, this star, um, the star of David, basically. If you're not, if you're not familiar with what a Merkaba is, you can research it. It's just kind of a fun energy tool to use. But um, so I will imagine, let me switch hands because my hand's tired. I don't have a stand right now. So I will imagine myself in the middle of a Merkaba and, and spinning it. So it's, but it's inside my heart. And then I, then I move it out from around me and put it all around my body. So all around my electromagnetic field. And then I imagine that everything, everything that makes me feel safe and comforted in and, and empowered and in, in a, and engaged with life, like the things that I love about life, all the things that make me come alive, all the things that make me want to live. I push that excitement out into the Merkaba and imagining, it, imagining that energy going all the way to the edge of my auric field so that anything that interacts with me, I, I just make sure that field is so strong. Like, re, And I imagine energy going into my auric field. And this is a real electromagnetic field around your body. So when you focus on it and put energy does, towards it, it does shift your vibration. So, and not only that, when you think something, you're bringing in the essence of that. So if you're thinking about things you love, if you're thinking about a, a powerful field of energy around you spinning, <clears throat> you're, you're, you're thinking of that rather than the things that make you feel uncomfortable or what you don't like and are feeling vulnerable going out or any of those things. So I, and I don't think of this as protection. I think of this as a powerful force of me. So it's just my energy spinning around me. And I imagine that within that force, all of, all of my stuff all of my power and strength is contained and I just keep filling it up and it comes from my spine and my heart, that energy coming out of me. So it's just a, a, a visualization and a reminder that energy doesn't come, I don't take energy from other people and draw it in. I, I get my energy from my center and my core and I spin it out. And that also makes me a match to think, like every time I consciously do this, I'm, I'm more of a match to positive people, powerful people, experiences that make me feel empowered and, and excited about living versus when I stay in a low, if I don't do that, and sometimes it doesn't happen, but you know, often 
if you're a sensitive empath, and especially if you're an emotional empath, it can be easy to always go down to the lowest denominator. You can always feel the most vulnerable place. And vulnerable doesn't mean wrong. Vulnerable is your superpower. So it's always good to understand what your vulnerabilities are, your most vulnerable space, and then power yourself from that from that space. Work your life around your vulnerabilities because it's actually going to be your strength. Because anything, anywhere you've been wounded in life is where you you are, that's what you're studying. Like for me, my mom died when I was 12. I was sexually abused when I was younger. I always had this sense of being in my own kind of feeling alone. And, and then I've had death in my life over and over and over again. Death of animals, death of my nephew, death of friends. Like death has been something that I, I feel like I've studied since I was eight years old and mastered. And ma like, I, sh I shouldn't say mastered, but like, I feel like I'm becoming a master of it because that is what my life has, it has shaped my life. So rather than making that be my weakness and something that holds me back, I, I look at it as a strength. And I build my Merkaba or my energy field from that space, knowing that okay, what are my, what are my vulnerabilities? Where where do I, what will immediate, what always works in my day? What always makes me feel good? Where what will help me feel empowered? All those things. I'm kind of blabbing at this point. None of this has anything to do with the the, the technique I was going to talk about. So the Merkaba is coming out of your pores. You can imagine if you're in a crowded area, imagine your your pores actually breathing in like whatever you want to breathe in, like joy or empowerment or peace, and breathing out little tiny Merkabas out of your whole, out of every pore in your body. So you're sending that like powerful energy out around you, like almost like a little, little pop, pop rocks. You know, I imagine them go out like that and you can imagine this any way you want. But the idea is to imagine your energy pushing out, especially if you're an emotional empath, rather than constantly drawing energy in, push energy out, use your mind to push energy out. And and um, the other thing that I was going to say is to go in costume. This is the thing that I've actually been practicing, and it really works well. If you're going to be in a crowded place or like a party or anywhere or even just going out and you are an emotional empath and you draw energy in, one of the things I've been practicing is, okay, when I go out, I'm going to go in full character. And I used to feel, because authenticity is really important to me, I used to feel like I, I kind of shied away from... Uh, I. I <sighs> I like getting dressed up and I like looking well, but I also don't like being fake. And I grew up in a place where there was a lot of like posing and people sort of, you know, the, the culture was very much believing that looks are the only thing that matter and bodies the only thing that matter. And so I kind of have like a little, I don't like to do that. However, I've discovered that if I go in full character out, anytime I'm out, I imagine myself, okay, how do I want to look? How, how do I want to feel? What do I want to present myself as? Imagine that I'm just in character, pure in character, but kind of like I do it for fun as like, being an undercover, you know, lover of the world so that I can send love to everyone. But the idea is to to dress however you want. Like in a way, I, I purposely, sometimes I just let my, uh, it's something I've been practicing recently, but just really tune in. What do I want to wear? How do I want to feel? What do I want my, what do I want my outfit to say? Because again, if you dress in a way that makes you feel there's a way that we can dress that pulls energy to us. And there's the way that we can dress that we fountain out energy and shine. And so there is something to being in costume, whatever costume you want to be in, but like just having a certain way that you present yourself when you go out. And if you don't take yourself too seriously and you know you're kind of just going undercover, you don't have to feel like you're being um, inauthentic or trying to be something you're not. You're just like, no, I'm in character. I'm going out in character and I'm just going to love people and I'm and I'm going to remove I what I call it wizard awareness. So I I mean, I don't remove wizard awareness. I, I I allow myself to have wizard awareness. So I pull my consciousness of Amanda back into an observer position. And I tell myself before I go out, I'm just observing. Uh, every single person that I interact with is an aspect of me. And I'm somehow drawing them to me by whatever vibrational equation I'm carrying in this moment in my auric field. Because it's impossible for me to be a match to something, to, to draw something into my experience that I'm not a match to. So I don't take it personally when I go out. Because when you're going out in public and you're going to be around a lot of people, there's lots of different energy. And at any given moment, we are a different vibration of energies. So a different like mix of vibrations, I mean. So I don't take it personally, but I just imagine myself pull back. I push my aura fully out so I'm, I feel powerful and put whatever. I imagine my aura is like a field around me and I'll put whatever inside of it. Like I imagine a sphere and I put like the essence of lavender and crystals and like I'll just put them in my mind. But I imagine myself feel like my whole auric field 
filled with this essence. And then go in character, just however I want to dress up, however I want to be, pull my awareness back and think of this as this is just a learning opportunity for me. I'm not going to take it personally. I'm not going to take anyone around me personally and I'm not going to take the world personally. This is for me to learn. And then when I go home and I draw in, because I am a very intimate person and I, I like to feel. Feeling is my superpower. So I like to feel and I like to feel deeply. So when I come home, I, you know, I always make sure I have personal time where I journal and express how I feel or process or whatever. And then I have close friends that I would do that with and people that I love that I feel safe bringing into that most intimate circle of mine. But I don't know if this makes sense, but it's just something that's really been helping me. The whole breathing in and out of my pores, breathing the little tiny Merkabas out of my pores, pushing my Merkaba out from my heart and filling it with essences that feel good to me, and then going in character in crowded areas or crowded places, even to the store. And just imagine you're somebody else, but do it with an intention, like set an intention. I'm going to love people, or I'm going to try to, I'm going to go out to a store and I'm going to look for things that make me happy. Like a little girl that's, you know, I don't know, just adorable with her mom or at anything, anything. But set an intention before you go out and so your focus is on something different rather than, oh, I'm sensitive and when I go out, I feel overwhelmed by everyone and I feel sick so I can't go out or I need to protect myself. Because anytime we do that, we're focusing on, we're basically saying, I'm weak, I'm vulnerable, I'm, I'm a victim to this experience. And I am, I'm, I, I am out of control. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Like I don't have any control. But there are so many things that we can do to feel like we have more control. And it always starts in our mind. And it, it cumula accumulates with our emotions. Our emotions are what drive us to do anything. So emotions are absolutely crucial. You cannot bypass them. You can't pretend they're not there. You can't think yourself into a positive place without actually being authentic with where you're at. So it's just something I've been practicing. It's been really working well for me. I know I haven't done any videos for all because I've actually been in a really deep process putting together a new program um, that is all kind of based on my 11 day emotional detox, but I'm going through all the chakras, all 13 chakras. So it's going to be a really cool system and I'm excited about it. I have a pre-offer that I did just for people in my empath group and um, I'm going to put the link below this video for anyone who wants to sign up because the the class is going to be going through the seven emotional detox of the seven chakras. It's just going to be the first seven because this is my kind of test run class that I'm offering. A, it's only thirty three dollars. I'm offering that as a special, and it's going to be it's going to be online on, on a, in a private Facebook group, so you can access it at your convenience. But I'm actually putting together a whole series that's going to be pre-recorded and it's going to be all 13 chakras. And that whole system is going to be $222 for that program. So if you want to get in on the $33 seven, seven chakra program, you can do that um, if you click the link below and put in the password is special offer. I'm only offering this to those of you in my group, in the Facebook group. So, um, so... If you're not in the Facebook group, join the Facebook group and you can get that offer. And for those of you who are in it, click the link and you'll be able to access it that way. All right, I hope you guys are doing well and I'll talk to you later. Ciao.